okay so here and basically I'm, uh, I want to see this so I need to add a class flag and then I to specify the seeder name so I can seed this out like this so let me show it to uh, show the both ways to you php artisan db seed and then you need to specify the class flag here and then you need to type your seeder name in our case it would be um, category seeder category seeder like this right and then uh, i'm here uh, when i will hit enter so it will seed our categories right so i don't want to seed this like this i want to it's pretty same i'm going to just show you another way why i'm preferring this second one right so i always prefer this uh, to uh, call my seeders all seeders here in the database so you can call this method like this call and then you can call your seeder here in this uh, you need to specify the categories seeder like this right you can call only one seeder like this but if you have multiple seeders so you can add them into the array here like this so this will all your you can add the comma and add second seeder and third and fourth stuff like that so you can add multiple seeder into this um, by calling this call method and you can execute uh, your seeder will be code will be executed so i'm always follow this convention why because uh, whenever i'm uh, building the application so i'm uh, i need uh, some basic stuff like in this case we need uh, some categories so when whenever user is going to create the uh, create the post he need uh, some categories right so for some reason i uh, forgot about to add this category so user will not be able to add the categories so that's why i always added this into the database seeder so when i will execute this php artisan db seed so it will execute this seeder and if i have multiple uh, other seeders so it will execute also these seeder so i always also add my factories here in this run method so i just need to run this php artisan db seed and it's going to execute all of my seeders and factories so i don't need to manually take care about anything that uh, i need to execute the category seeder i need to execute the uh, execute the post seeder i need to execute the tag seeder right so i'm just defining it at one place and i need to just run this php artisan db seed and it will execute uh, going to execute this database seeder and my all data will be seeded so that's his um it says personal preference but this is a good way to uh, prevent it from the uh, prevent it from the exception so let me turn video up. okay so our seeders are defined and our database seeding is completed successfully so let's go to the database and check that we have uh, three entries are not and yes these are added and now let's uh, give it a refresh and uh, we need to load these categories here in the category drop down so let's implement this out okay so let's so uh, uh, let me uh, close this database seeder category seeder auth blade and post controller and this one so here i want to display i want to display the categories so first i need to go to the post seeder uh, not seeder i need to go to this post controller and i want to also one more uh, thing that to uh, I don't want to open this on this index page because in the index I will load all of my post. So I need to open this uh, here when I'm opening this create method, right? So now it's not going to open this in this post. So I need to open the post slash create, right? Post slash create because we are creating the post. Okay, so we are returning it from the create method, and here I need to return the categories to this view. So here I'm going to define the categories, and then call category, and then here I'm going to call this all method. Okay, so you can then pass this uh, categories to your view. So you can use the compact method and define your variable without uh, any dollar sign. You can use with method, or you can use the dollar so i always most of the time i prefer to use this dollar right and then you need to specify your categories like this 
okay so now this category these categories will be available in this create right so here i'm going to check that if i'm going to apply the blade directive and the blade directive i'm going to use a count basically this count is used on the array to check that it's a count like how many items exist in this array so here i'm going to check that pass the categories variable and i'm checking that if this count is greater than zero then it's going to display the categories otherwise it's not going to display so basically we are uh, implementing this to prevent the exception if we don't have any categories so it's not going to throw any exception and here i'm going to implement the for each loop okay in the first i need to pass the same categories and here i need to pass the category single category okay and then here i'm going to add some option and in the option i'm going to pass this category id so i'm basically referencing its foreign key and here i need to pass the category name so this category name will be visible in our drop down so let me correctly get get gore name okay so now let's go here and give it a refresh so it's going to display as category okay we have three categories so if i choose someone and if i open this so out here it's a uh, inspect element and this will contain a select and this select contain one two three so the id so basically we are going to pass the id because we create this foreign key in our post table so let me go to the post table and yes we have a category id so we are going to store the id to link our uh, category with the post okay so we uh, name this category and uh, this above one we name this title this one is is publish and this one is uh, file let me name this file and then this one contain a description right <coughs> okay so now i'm going to submit this form right and uh, i need to first to uh, fill up this form things here i need i'm going to find this post method because i'm submitting something to the uh, to the database so here i need to call uh, you can use route method uh, url method or you can use a route method i always follow this route because this suggesting us uh, that uh, what are the routes exist to and uh, then you you can easily know that what are the routes you can easily uh, guess the guess your route and you can select the specific route if you pass this url so it's not going to suggest us anything that uh, or slash post or url exists so that's why i always prefer to use this route so it's also suggested that these route exists where i'm going to use this uh, post dot uh, store right so let me remove this out from there and this would be uh, or slash post so it's uh, basically naming this um, without this auth okay so here we have a post dot store and let's save this one and give it a refresh so basically we are going to submit our form on this out so now i'm going to fill this form using fake flare chrome extension and here i'm going to submit this out it says page expired hmm. it's tough so let me check that we have csrf token no we don't have csrf token so that's why it's throwing 419 exception so which is about to csrf token is not found or mismatch so add csrf token like this or you can add this as a hidden input hidden and then you need to uh, pass the value attribute like this and this contain a csrf and token helper like this but i will always mm, we are in the blade so i will always prefer this so csrf token like this right okay so now let's get refresh and it's going to work like a charm okay man so let's fake fill this submit this out it's going to submit this on the store 
and yes it's submitted but it's not displaying anything why because we are not printing this out so basically it's uh, submitting on the store method so let's go to the post controller and this store is accepting this data so here i'm going to return request and i'm going to this request on right so now it's going to print all the data so let's uh, reload this you don't need to hard reload otherwise you need to submit the form again so here we have uh, a title category id is publish id we don't have file and description is also null the file is also null so let's go back and check that we fill these things are not so let's fill them i fill this out like this choose some file okay let's go to the downloads and in the downloads i'm going to use this cdl transparent submit this out and yes we got this uh, description this image and uh, still yes we have this file here that's good that's good everything is there so let's go here and check that why this file is appearing here so let's check that where we have any files no we don't have so why is this is playing this file is uh, null Mm -hmm. we don't have this file attribute no we don't have so maybe it's uh, displaying mm, this one okay whatever leave this we don't need this out okay so here we are submitting this to this controller but what if the uh, this title is required category is required and this one is required but user uh, does not fill this out so how we can prevent this from the exception so there are multiple ways the first one is you can uh, handle the validation on the client side and then second is you can handle the validation on the server side and the third is you need to apply the validation on the um, validation on your database layer but uh, database on the database layer it's not going to enter the data into the database but it's going to throw a weird exception to the client so we are going to not throw the weird exception we are going to throw the inf informative validations that uh, with the descriptive tag that why this form is not submitting so user can check this out that what's the reason and then you can refill the form and submit this again so here uh, you know that uh, if we need some uh, some input field so we add a required keyword in the input field so i'm not going to add this for now because i want to test the server side validation first and then i'm going to go to the first one uh, client side so here there are two ways the first one is you can apply the validation in the controller so here you can call this uh, request and call this validate method and uh, apply your validation like uh, title and on the title you can apply the validation required and by the way uh, i in previous days i follow this required slash pipe and then second validation minimum to maximum and like this but now i follow this array this array convention so let me pass this out first key and then second validation and then third validation so why i am following this uh, convention so basically I'm following this convention for if I have some custom class which contain my custom rule so I can easily add this class so user validation class like this if I have a class right so in this way I can add this rule but if I'm using this pipe notation so I can't uh, add this rule so that's why I always follow this uh, follow this uh, now array rule so that's why i'm preferring that you know i will also teach you that what are the best practices and why i'm using these practices okay so then i'm going to follow this uh, minimum would be the two and the maximum would be the you can say that it would be a 30 or 50 or 70 but i'm going to make this 255 because this is the maximum length of our string so you can validate um, 
it in your own way if you don't want to create the title above then uh, 40 characters so you can add the 40 here so it will not going it's will going to restrict the uh, restrict the user first i pause this 20 here so now i'm going to go back and here i'm going to first to uh, uh, remove this title and i'm going to submit this out so it's going to return us back but we are not going to view any of the exception and yes we return back but we are not displaying any of the exception why no, because we are not to displaying any of the message basically i'm talking about the message so how you can display the message so let's uh, go to your create view and here on the top of this form before this uh, uh, create after this uh, yes before this create post uh, this create post i think this yes so i need to add the validation Mm, I'm going to add this after this here so now this will looks more pretty so here I'm going to display all of my messages so if you go here and type laravel any error and uh, open the laravel documentation or you can get this so uh, instantly from here grapper but I'm going to the laravel documentation and then get this out Let's wait for a moment guys. Okay, our video size is going too much bigger. So let me apply this validation and then I'm coming. And then I will, I'm going to pause this video. So here, this is a logic. So let's copy this and I'm going to explain that what it's doing. So here okay so here basically we are checking that if we have any error so we are going to display this bootstrap functionality that we are going to display a alert and then here we applied this for each we are getting all the error and we are displaying a single error and here we are adding this into the list item display this one error in one line and second and third like this so here if i go here and submit this again so it's going to throw all the error First, uh, now I'm, it's going to display only one error because we have applied only validation for this title only, right? And uh, in the next video, I'm going to apply validation all of the on other files also. So if you like this video, please subscribe the YouTube channel and stay tuned for the next videos. Bye bye.